The Hebrew root words used most often for the concept of redemption are para, gal, and kapar. Para is the legal term concerning substitution required for the person or animal delivered. The verb gal is the legal term for the deliverance of some person, property, or right. The third verb, kapar, is to cover. Substitution, covering, deliverance. These are the key components of a biblical worldview of redemption. According to Webster's 1828 dictionary, redemption is repurchase of captured goods or prisoners, the act of procuring the deliverance of persons or things into possession and power of captors by the payment of an equivalent ransom release as a redemption of prisoners taken in war, the redemption of ship and cargo. In theology, God's purchase, God's, fa- God's purchase in favor by death and sufferings of Christ, the ransom or deliverance of sinners from the bondage of sin and penalties of God's violated law by the atonement of Christ. Redemption means to be freed or liberated from the imprisonment of the enemy. Redemption is a vital tenet of the Christian faith because God redeemed us. True redemption can only be found through Christ, and redemption ultimately affects our salvation. We as Christians know that true redemption comes through Jesus Christ and his ultimate sacrifice and resurrection. God just have his son die for us so that we may live with him in paradise. Colossians 1, 13 through 14 says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, forgiveness of sins. No one is too far gone from Christ's redemption. Cindy Ruiz once said, God has it all figured out. He will make a way when you don't see a way. Joel 2.12 to 13 says, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Through Jesus' redemption, we are all his children, and everyone will worship him forever. Another aspect of redemption is the humanistic worldview of redemption. As Christians, we should know other people's ideas of what they think redemption is. Many see redemption from a prisoner's view, being caught having committed a crime of injustice, being thrown into prison, and being liberated by the law. Author Shaka Sankor, who once was a prisoner, wrote the book Writing My Wrongs. He said he could find his redemption through, your, through his acts, yet you cannot find your redemption through acts. Scripture actually speaks against this. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. Well, (laughs) I'm sorry. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. As this verse says, you can only find redemption through true faith. Many people look for redemption for years, but they don't know that Jesus is right there with his redemption. Sometimes what you've been looking for your entire life has been right in front of you all along. Another important part of redemption is the subject of afterlife. People are divided by the topic. Is it an afterlife or not? According to the website Parna, 8 of 10 Americans, or 81%, believe in an afterlife of some sort. But we as Christians know the truth. Luke 21, 27 through 28 says, And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Many don't like the subject of death because it can be very depressing and dreadful, but we all must face it. It will happen to all of us at one point, yet our spiritual life will remain. However, in our physical life, there's a choice to be made that will affect our afterlife. Do you choose Jesus' redemption or stay conformed to your sins? The choice is yours. No one can make it for you. Redemption is needed in our salvation and can only truly be found in Christ. In conclusion, The subject of redemption can be seen from both a biblical and a humanistic worldview. Ephesians 1 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Anyone can be redeemed, no matter what. Before the fall of Adam and Eve, we were perfect, but because of sin, we are now flawed. But because of Jesus, we are forgiven. Forgiven. The power that is in that word is the power that can heal the sick, that can make the blind see even raise the dead to life. 
Jesus has prepared us a place in heaven for all those who are redeemed. Author J.R.R. Tolkien quotes, From the ashes a fire shall be woken, a light from the shadows shall spring. Renewed shall be the blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king. I encourage you, live a legacy that knows and loves Jesus that will follow his teachings for many generations to come. Generations that will know that Jesus is the true redemption because Jesus is coming again. Thank you.